Hello, in this video, we're going to look at an older book on discrete math in computer science. It's called Discrete Mathematics in Computer Science. It was written by Donald F. Stanat and David F. McAllister. And it's got this really interesting blue cover. I love the, like, the gold lettering. Beautiful, right? Discrete Mathematics in Computer Science. Just a really good looking book. Open it up and take a look at the contents. Uh, before I do, let me just mention that discrete math is um, something you study, at least in the U.S., if you are in college studying for computer science. So there's a course you take, it's called discrete math, and it's considered a hard course. It's considered a very hard course for students. People struggle with this uh, quite a bit. Discrete mathematics and computer science. Donald F. Stanat, Department of Computer Science, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And David McAllister, Department of Computer Science, North Carolina State University. Cool. 1977 by Prentice Hall. Sylvia and Beth. Pretty old book. 1977 was a very long time ago. Mathematical Models. So this, this book, these books, by the way, um, the prereq for a book like this. So like if you wanted to read a book like this, you're thinking about buying it or whatever, self-study, um, is just motivation, right? Because it starts from the very beginning. The mathematical models, introduction principles, models, mathematical models, purposes of models, and mathematical reasoning. So that's really basic stuff. We'll take a look at that. Sets, also pretty basic, but you could probably start with mathematical reasoning and go from there. And we'll take a look at it just so you can see how, how hard it actually is and what you think uh, of the book. Binary relations, functions, counting and algorithm analysis. We have infinite sets and algebras. And it does have answers to uh, selected exercises in the back of the book, which is quite nice. Most of these books do. This is a fairly modern book, even though it's, it's older. Um, you know, the style is, is, is nice. nice. It's a nice, clean book. It's a clean book. So you do have answers to some of the problems. And he actually works out. He works out the answers, as you can see. Even the proofs. When the answer is given, right? As the answer is not always given. Let's go to that beginning, just because I told you I would show you. Here it talks about all the symbols. So it gives you all the notation that you see. You have all those logic symbols. You learn those when you study logic. And you can learn those in, these book, in this book. Number symbols, numbers, sets. Even more symbols, right? All kinds of symbols. So that's kind of nice. So if you are reading the book or you just open the book as a reference, you're like, oh, what does that mean? Um, if it's not clear in the section, perhaps it's defined in a previous section or something and you don't know where to find the definition, you can go here and this tells you what the symbols are. So the more math you know, the more you start to learn all you know these symbols. Eventually, you, you know, you know what all of these symbols are. And if you don't know, you can just read it. For example, like here, like pi sub one plus pi sub two, what does that mean? That could mean anything, right? So here it says the sum of partitions, pi sub one and pi sub two. Okay. All right. So stuff like that, you know, you might not, even if you already know math, it's still beneficial because you might not know exactly what, what they mean in that particular case. So this is chapter zero. It's a mathematical models. Let's go to chapter one so I can show you how it starts. So you can make a decision as to whether or not you think it's a good book. And discrete math is hard. When you take discrete math, you know, you usually have a book for the course. In my experience, it's always a pretty hard book because most discrete math books are pretty hard. So having lots of discrete math books, I think, is good because it makes it easier to learn the subject. Because mathematics is the study of the properties of mathematical structures. In this chapter, we will study mathematical reasoning, which is the process used to verify these properties, right? So Propositions. An assertion is a statement. A proposition is an assertion that which is either true or false, but not both. A proposition is true. We say it has a truth value of true. If a proposition is false, its truth value is false. The following are all propositions. The moon is made of green cheese. Four is a prime number, right? Some of them are true, some of them are false, right? Four is not a prime number, right? Uh, a, the moon is made of green cheese. That would be true. No, I'm kidding. It's not made of green cheese, but I mean, so everything is a true or false statement. And then here's, here's things that are not propositions. Okay. The first example is an assertion, but not a proposition because its truth value depends on the values of x and y. 
Similarly, the truth value of the second assertion depends on the value of x. Right? Examples i and j are not assertions and are therefore not propositions. Are you leaving? Buy four of them. Right? That's not, that's not true or false. Interesting, right? So it explains everything quite well, and it explains why those are not propositions. Right? I, think, I thought that was a pretty good explanation. And you can read it and go from there. I'm going to put a paper clip in it. That was not me. I'm going to leave it. Oh, maybe I should take it out. Oh, I don't know. Now it's going to leave a mark. What do you do with stuff like this? I have, I have some books that have like rusted paper clips in them. Uh, I'll just take it out. Relic from the past. How old was that paper clip? Was there any other paper that it clipped in its lifetime? Interesting, the highlighting and the writing in old books, right? Got some exercises. Looks like it's got quite a few exercises. Kind of nice. Jump around. It's talking about relations. Relations are really important. There's a special type of relation that's even more important. It's called an equivalence relation. And you study those uh, in a book like this. It should be somewhere here. Equivalence relation. Should be... Here, I don't see the word equivalence relation, but here it says, well, it's talking about reflexive, symmetric, and transitive relations. So basically, if a relation is um, symmetric, reflexive, and transitive, it's an equivalence relation. Here it talks about those things, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Yeah. Um, notice there's highlighting here. That's because the person who this book before me probably use this for a course and this is something you would cover in the course so like you could buy this or buy any book on discrete math and you could self-study so that when you take the course you're prepared that's what i did uh for discrete math i um i studied a lot you know during the course and a little bit before it too because i had heard it was a really hard class so i, I did really well that, that was like a big victory for me big victory I had the highest grade in the class, and we had, I think we had 300 students to start with. Uh, by the second test, half the class was gone. You know, it was like a massacre, like a bloodbath. And the teacher was really good. He was really, really good. I thought he was awesome, but it's just the material, you know? People say uh, uh, books like this are tough because th the topics jump. You know, you're jumping from one topic to another. And also, it's very different from like algebra you know up until this point you're like okay algebra one algebra two geometry you take trig it's all algebra based and you do like some calc one calc two maybe you know and then all of a sudden you know maybe even calc three and differential equations and then you take this um so it's just very different from that type of mathematics but it's a decent book um it's got good explanations it's got good exercises and you get answers to some of the problems i mean it's not bad it's pretty good i like it i think it's good uh, there's certainly other books that are harder than this one um, yeah, easier books are usually better for learning because if they're easy, that means you can understand them. At the same time, if they're too easy and you already know the material, um, they're not so good. Anyways, a random video on this book I have, Greek Mathematics and Computer Science. I'll try to find it, by the way. I, I haven't looked, but I'll try to find it after making this video, and I will post a link in the description in case you want to check it out. Until next time, good luck. Take care.